Hello and welcome to this first look exploring session, looking at part of the King's entertainment in passing to his coronation, the author Ben Johnson. Um, and uh, yes, we have previously looked at uh, Decker's uh, 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 pageants for this royal entry. Um, King James, James VI, as he transitions to become James I, um, gets his coronation and uh, and uh, uh, makes his uh, progression uh, f uh, across London. Uh, and uh, the job was divided uh, in part between uh, Decker and uh, Johnson. We, I say we've done Johnson, uh, we've done Decker already in two two videos previously, um, and uh, we're now going to look at the the pageants by Ben Johnson and see what he says happened. Of course, what they say happened is not necessarily exactly what actually happened, um, and uh, and we may be looking at uh, the material that we have on what might actually have happened, or at least one person's view of it, uh, another time. Uh, but we have in the room, we have this wonderful group of people. Uh, we have uh, Eric, we have Desna, we have Liza, we have Tom, and we have Tracy Hill, uh, our, our regular city chronologer, who's going to uh, uh, keep keep me on the straight and narrow. Um, when I say we're going to read uh, Ben Johnson's account, uh, I'm, I am, uh, we're not reading the footnotes, uh, of which in his printed edition, there are a lot. <laughs> He, he likes adding a lot of notes. Uh, there are also, uh, though we are doing some bits of Latin because there are various Latin tags that are demonstrated on the uh, on the pageants themselves. Uh, we won't be reading uh, some of the longer passages. So, uh, but these things are available online if you want to have a look yourself. Uh, but we're just doing a bit of a flyby on this one to get a sense of what Johnson produced. So uh, I'm going to ask uh, uh, people to read uh, the odd paragraph here or there. Um, it's it's not as easily um, paragraphed as some of the uh, previous ones. Uh, so um, I'll 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 just sort of pass it on. Uh, I'll, I'll, every so often I'll just jump in and say. The next person reads. So I'll ask Liza, could you read the uh, uh, the opening gambits uh, until I say stop? Part of the king's entertainment in passing to his coronation, the author, B. J. Fondo magis dignos liquid spectare triumphus, Marshall, at Fenchurch. The scene presented itself in a square and flat upright like to the side of a city, the top thereof above the vent and crest, adorned with houses, towers, and steeples set off in perspective. Upon the battlements in a great capital letter was inscribed Londinium. According to Tacitus, it's Suetonium. Don't read it if it's in bold. <laughs> I wondered. <laughs> Beneath that, in a less and different character, was written Camera Regia, um, which title immediately after the Norman conquest it began to have, that means royal chamber, um, and by the indulgence of succeeding princes hath been hitherto continued. In the frieze over the gate, it seemed to speak this verse, Par domus haec celo, sed minor est domino taken out of Marshall, and implied that though this city, for the state and magnificence, might by hyperbole be said to touch the stars and reach up to heaven, yet it was far inferior to the master thereof, who was his majesty, and in that respect unworthy to receive him. And Desna, take up the cudgels. The highest person advanced therein was Monarchia Britannica, and fitly, applying to the above-mentioned title of the city, the King's Chamber, and therefore here placed as in the proper seat of the empire. She was a woman richly attired in cloth of gold and tissue, a rich mantle over her state, two crowns hanging, with pencil shields through them, the one limbed with a particular coat of England, the other of Scotland, on either side also a crown, with the like scutcheons and peculiar coats of France and Ireland. In her hand she holds a scepter, on her head, a fillet of gold, interwoven with palm and laurel, her hair bound into four several points, descending from her crowns and in her lap a little globe, inscribed upon Orbis Britannicus, and beneath the word Divisus ab Orbe, to show that this empire is a world divided from the world. The wreath denotes victory and happiness, the scepter and crowns, sovereignty, 
the shields, the precedency of the countries and their distinctions. At the feet was set Theosophia or divine wisdom, all in white, a blue mantle seeded with stars, a crown of stars on her head. Her garments figured truth, innocence and clearness. She was always looking up. In her one hand, she sustained a dove, in the other, a serpent. The last to show her subtlety, the first her simplicity, alluding to that text of scripture. Her word, her may regis regnant. Intimating, oh. Yeah, no, I think I'll pause there. It's very difficult to find pause points in this um, because it's sort of all, everything flows into it. Um, but we've got, um, there's, there's no preamble in, in this particular, the, 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 this version. Um, there's none of the, the, the sort of set up and, and, uh, and devising. It's just, this is the thing um, uh, and the scene, uh, it, it's, it's in a square, flat, upright, like to the side of the city, top, above the vent, um, it's at Fent Church. Um, and we've got these figures. We've got uh, uh, Monarchia, Britannica. Uh, we've got, um, yeah, we've got we've got all these 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 captions added to it. Um, we've got elements that we've sort of seen in other things, but it's it's a slightly harder one to unpack um, than I think some of the other stuff we've done. Uh, Tracy, any thoughts on this? Um, are, are we missing anything here that uh, might be helpful? No, I mean it's it is very much Ben John his part. Um, it's it's only interested in the sections that he wrote, um, and as you can see from all the lavish footnoting and classical references, it's not a kind read. Um, <clears throat> topographically, the page is really kind of bizarre because there's a tiny bit of speech on any given page, and then the whole thing is just completely surrounded with notes and, and showing off and stuff like that. So no, it's just the Londinia March at Friend Church um, and then the one on um, Temple Bar and then the one at Strand. That's all he did. Mm. Um, he's not as interested as Decker is by a long way about people's experience of it, mm. even the King's experience of it. King doesn't really feature as a kind of protagonist moving through it in the way that he does with Decker. Yeah, of course, Decker seemed to have a beef about the King's procession. He kept saying, oh, the King moved on. He didn't really didn't you know too long didn't read um sort of the the pageant equivalent of that um so uh, in terms of the procession order uh where is uh, the fenchurch station uh is it is uh in, in relation to the rest of the uh, the, the the performances it's, it's the first it's the first arch obviously because it's londinium mm. um, the, the kind of the positioning of it rhetorically if not topographically is that he's entering london going through this arch mm. Hence being greeted by the genius of London, although he actually has been in London for a little while. But he sets off from the Tower, which isn't London, the Tower is Royal. So he comes down Mark Lane, which is a very narrow little lane, sort of a uh, dog, dog leg from the Tower, and then comes down, turns left onto Fenchurch, which is a much wider street. And this, this arch was set up near the, the, um, near the church. Um, and I just remembered that I actually have a, a, t a diagram of the procession uh, or potential uh, 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 routes uh, and potential. So, yes, we have got Fenchurch uh, marked as potential element of that. Um, Should we all t temporarily yeah. hide ourselves so that your screen gets bigger? Oh, no, let, 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 let them squint. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, one person switched the uh, additional person switched the camera. Off. There we are. Um, uh, actually, yeah, Tom, Tom, go and switch your camera off. Uh, I, I could do a. You, you. It's all right. Don't worry. It's, it's large enough. Um, but broadly speaking, yes, you're starting from the, 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 the tower. And the, the precise routes for royal entries do change depending on the royal entry. This is not an authoritative version of the, uh, the, the, the route. Um, but broadly speaking, you're going to intersect with Cheapside eventually, and that's sort of where we covered with Decker. Uh, Decker was very much when you're in the city uh, coverage, and uh, and some of Johnson's stuff will be on the other end of this route, um, uh, on 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 the other the other end of the procession, as it were. Um, and uh, I'd forgotten a I had this and b that I could do it. Okay, um, back in the room, everyone. Um, don't run away. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I should do a proper sh slide thing for this one day, but uh, uh, it's it's a little too much of a fat. Um, so um, yeah, let's let's gather some more information because I say it, I, I get the sensation this is going to be less of a riveting read um, than Decker's uh, or some of the others have been. Uh, Eric, if you could uh, take up the cudgels, please. 
I actually lost our spot. Uh, we were at uh, her word were uh, were uh, per me regis regnant uh, was our, our okay. Yeah, yeah. The, the figure of British monarchy we're talking about here. Yes. yes. Her word per me regis regnant, intimating how by her all kings do govern and that she is the foundation and strength of kingdoms. To which end she was here placed upon a cube at the foot of the monarchy as, as her base and stay. Directly beneath her stood Genius Urbis, a person attired rich, reverend and antique, his hair long and white, crowned in, with a wreath of plane tree, which is said to be Arbor Genial, Genialis, his mantle of purple and buskins of that color. He held in one hand a goblet, in the other a branch full of little twigs to signify increase and in indulgence. His word, his arm, his word, his armis, pointing to the two that supported him, whereof the one on the right hand was Bulefdes, which is not Latin, um, figuring the council of the city, uh, and was suited in black and purple, a wreath of oak upon his head, sustaining for his ensigns on his left arm a scarlet robe, and in his right hand the Fasces. I don't know if that's how it's pronounced, um, as tokens of magistracy with this inscription servare civis on the other hand the other on the left hand polemius the warlike force of the city in an antique coat of art or armor with a target and sword his helm on and crowned with laurel implying strength and conquest in his hand he bore the standard of the city with this word extinguire et hosteis Expressing by those several modes uh, connect, connects with that with those arms of counsel and strength, the genius was able to extinguish the king's enemies and preserve his citizens. Okay, Tom, take up the cudgels. Um, I'm, I'm afraid I'm having difficulty at the moment. Okay, um, I'll pass you over to Liza then. Uh, if you could tell us what's underneath the, uh, the underneath. warlike force. Underneath these, in an abac thrust out before the rest, lay Tamesis, the river, as running along the side of the city in a skin coat made like flesh, naked and blue. Uh, so think like Dr. Manhattan in Watchmen, or anyway. Um, his I don't mantle... think that's a footnote Ben Johnson put in. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> ben Johnson did not read Watchmen, although he probably would have enjoyed it if he had. Mm. One of the few. He anyway. would have had notes. We Sorry, all carry have. on. <laughs> um, Tamesis the river in a skin coat made like flesh naked and blue. His mantle of sea green or watercolor thin and bolen out like a sail. Bracelets around his wrists of willow and sedge, a crown of sedge and reed upon his head mixed with water lilies. His beard and hair long and overgrown. He leans his arm upon an earthen pot out of which water with live fishes are seen to run forth and play about him. His word, fulmina senserunt ipsa, um, of Ovid, mm. affirming that rivers themselves and such inanimate creatures have heretofore been made sensible of passions and affections, and that he now no less partook the joy of his majesty's grateful approach to the city than any of those persons to whom he pointed, which were the daughters of the genius and six in number, who in a spreading ascent upon several grices helped to beautify both the sides. Desna, First, could you tell us, tell us about the, the, the graces, please? First, Euphrosyne, or gladness, was suited in green, a mantle of diverse colours embroidered with all variety of flowers. On her head, a garland of myrtle, in her right hand, a crystal cruise filled with wine, in the left, a cup of gold. At her feet, a timbrel, harp and other instruments, all ensigns of gladness. Her word, ec evi mihi prima dies, as if this were the first hour of her life and the minute wherein she began to be, beholding so long coveted and looked for a presence. The second, Sebasis, or veneration, was varied in an ash-coloured suit and dark mantle, a veil over her head of ash colour, her hands crossed before her and her eyes half-closed. Her word, 
Mihi Semper Deus, implying both her office of reverence and the dignity of her object, who being as God on earth should never be less in thought. The third prothymia or promptitude was attired in a short tucked garment of flame colour, wings at her back, her hair bright and bound up with ribbons, her breast open, virago-like, her buskins so ribbanded. She was crowned with a chaplet of Tripoli to express readiness and openness in every way. In her right hand, she held a squirrel as being the creature most full of life and quickness. In the left, a close round sensor with the perfume suddenly to be vented forth at the sides. Her word, quedata porta. And showed that she was no less prepared with promptitude and alacrity than the winds were upon the least gate that shall be open to his high command. Eric, take up the next three uh, graces, please. The the fourth, uh, uh, yeah, the fourth Agrippina or vigilance in yellow, a sable mantle, seated with waking eyes and silver fringe, her chaplet of heliotropium or turnsole in her one hand, a lamp or crescent. In her other, a bell. The lamp signified search and sight, the bell warning, the heliotropium care and respecting her object, her word, speculamur in omneis, and implying the like duty of care and vigilance in herself. The fifth, agapi, or loving affection, in crimson fringed with gold, a mantle of flame color, her, red, her chaplet of red and white roses, in her hand, a flaming heart. Okay. This, the flame is expressed zeal. The red and white roses, a mixture of simplicity with love. Her robes, freshness and fervency. Her word, non sic exubie. exubie. Inferring that though her sister before had protested watchfulness and circumspection, Yet no watch or guard could be so safe to the estate or person of a prince of the love and natural affection of his subjects, which she in the city's behalf promised. The sixth, Omothimia, or unanimity, in blue, her robe blue and buskins, a chaplet of blue lilies, showing one truth and entireness of mind. Her In her lap lies a sheaf of arrows bound together, and in she in, and she herself sits weaving certain small silver twists. Her word, firma consensus facit, intimating that even the smallest and weakest aids by consent are made strong. Herself, personating the unanimity or consent of soul in all inhabitants of the city to his service. Shall I continue? Uh, yes, uh, these are all the personages or live figures whereof only two were speakers genius and temesis the rest were mutes other dumb compliments there were as the arms of the kingdom on the one side with this inscription his various uh with these mayest thou flourish on the other side the arms of the city with his his victors with these mayest thou conquer in the setter, uh, center there was an abac or square wherein a lengthy uh eulogy was written uh which we're not going to look at here it's a lengthy chunk of latin uh, but again uh, visual latin uh throughout uh this particular text this and the whole frame was covered with a curtain of silk painted like a thick cloud and at the approach of the king was instantly to be drawn the allegory being that those clouds were gathered upon the face of the city through their long want of his most wished sight. But now, as at the rising of the sun, all mists were dispersed and fled, when suddenly, upon silence made to the musics, a voice was heard to utter this verse, Totus adest uh, oculis adorat qui mentibus olim, signifying that he was now really objected to their my eyes, who before had been only but still present in their minds. Uh, we're going to pause there because uh, we do have the uh, speeches of uh, uh, the, the spirit genius uh, and, and Temesis uh, coming up but I think we really should pause and take in some of the details here because we're more in familiar territory with some of this aren't we we've got people in presentational mode representing figures um, we've got uh, animals uh, <laughs> featured. I'm particularly fond of a squirrel. Um, uh, uh, there, we've got the live fishes. I, 
I'm, which I'm quite interested about the uh, the logistics of that one. Um, and yeah, so we got these these these, these six figures um, uh, complementing here, um, and uh, yes, and and also just the way that the spirit of the city, but also the the force of the city, um, are being uh, personified here as well. So there's, there's a lot going on in this. And it has to be said, Ben Johnson isn't giving us the kind of clarity that I sometimes feel the pageants of the Lord Mayor's show have given us. There's a lot crammed in on this one. And I'm, I'm not sure. It just seems like a lot of stuff to me. But am I just being mean? I don't know. Um, thoughts? Who wants to leap in? Um, <laughs> there's, there's definitely a lot to decode. Um, mm. I mean, the, the Latin is, is generally glossed, isn't it? So that's a bit, that's helpful. Mm. Um, yeah, there's a strong emphasis on, on the kind of things that the characters are carrying, their garments and so on, and, and very little on, on the action, if you like, in as much mm -hmm. as there is any. One thing that, that strikes me, given that later on there is specifically a boy, um, I'm wondering whether these were girls mm -hmm. forming these roles. I know this is something we've talked about before, um, and I, there's been no way of conclusively proving it one way or the other, apart from the boys and girls in Antic Shakes line from that ballad. Um, but yeah, it's it just seems yeah he he makes a point of saying that it's it's she right through for mm. all of them. I mean, it's an interesting question on the public modesty front as well, with the third of the uh, uh, of uh, the, the 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 daughters. Um, who has her breast open virago like? Um, so um, and and you know this the 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 performativeness of uh, of, of women in often uh, quite exposed scantily clad uh, costuming uh, is something we, we see in uh, James's court. Um, uh, it's interesting uh, whether that that is something that that <laughs> that, that happens here as well. I mean, I'm assuming that it's it's reasonably modest in the way it's displayed uh, because it's a public spectacle. But um, it's a good, it's a question of how that's being done. It, well, Envy, Envy has, a, has an exposed breast, doesn't she, with the adder attached mm. to it. So um, it, may, it may be, yeah, maybe it is a convention that we're possibly a little bit more um, concerned about when they would have been then. Mm. But yeah, you're right. I mean, it does raise all sorts of questions. I think these are actually girls. Um, mm. I mean, I could be wrong, obviously, but I'm just, I'm just wondering. Yeah, well, or, or that there's some sort of because we've already got a skin suit of blue, so maybe because the, there's there's questions going all the way back to sort of mystery pageants with you know uh, Adam and Eve, you know uh, how do you do the nakedness of that or how did you know we we know that sometimes leather work was done there, so maybe there's there is a former that's going on here that's just not mentioned in the text. I, 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 I we do not know the answers to these questions. Uh, we, I'm just saying these things uh, out loud. Uh, other thoughts, other bits that leapt out at you. Um, I, I hope it's a performing squirrel. I really do. Um, and I hope it's got a little spring in it, so it sort of bounces around in in the performer's hand. I, that's what I'm asking for. You know, if you're a mute, if you're a mute, I, I, ex I at least expect decent prop action. That's that's what I, I expect from these things. Um, we do get some performance text in a moment, so uh, we will get a, a, a little bit to play with um, uh, going into this. Uh, so yes, we're going to complete this pageant now uh, after Eric says something. Ex uh, Eric. Yeah, I was wondering, because uh, I seem to remember, um, obviously, James took his time getting to London and so on and so forth and all that stuff. Um, and... Well, Elizabeth had died in like what September, September, October, November. I can't remember or March. March. Or, yeah, March. March. Uh, um, March uh, day, day before New Year, I think. Yeah. So, like, I'm just wondering what time of year this is at, because it's like, if it was, if it was body paint or something else, or you know, whatever it was, like, it would have been like sort of chaos. Uh, it's it the 25th was... of March. Mm. Okay, that, that's fine. <laughs> no, so, yeah. no, we're talking about it's the fifteenth of March because they could bang on about it in the eyes of March. Yeah, um, yeah, it's about a year they, later, isn't it? That's it's, right. It's, yeah, it's very and delayed. Later on, Johnson makes out that they've suddenly <coughs> changed the calendar to make fifteenth March the new day, New Year's Day rather than twenty fifth. That's what confused me. <laughs> yes. Which, which, yeah, it would have been a good opportunity to go for it, wouldn't it? Um, rather than you know, if the problems are knocking off eleven days later on or whatever it was. Um, uh, Okay, uh, let's let's finish this pageant then. Um, uh, uh, where where did I uh, get to? Yes, yeah, so uh, Eric, could you do the uh, the bit of text um, before we get to the speeches? Uh, Liza, if I could ask you to be the genius uh, of London, the the spirit of London, and uh, I mean, I'll try. 
Yeah. Uh, I was going to say Liza is already a genius, but it's different. Yes. Uh, yeah, and, uh, uh, and Desna, if I could ask you to read uh, Temesis, uh, and uh, then we'll pause and see how how that. It's nice to get some words to go with the imagery. Uh, so, Eric, uh, I'm assuming Tom that you're still not in a position to read at the moment. Uh, no, I'm back. Thank you. Oh, oh you are back. Okay, I'll yes. I'll, I'll I'll feed you something in after we finish this one then. Thank you. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Eric, take it away. Thus far, the complemental part of the first, wherein not only was not only laboured the expression of state and magnificence as proper to a triumphal arch, but the very sight, fabric, strength, policy, dignity, and affections of a city were all laid down to life. The nature and property of these devices being to present always some one entire body or figure consisting of distinct members and each of those expressing itself in the its per gifford own sphere or own active sphere yet all with that general harmony so connected and disposed as no one little part can be missing to the illustration of the whole where it is also well, all, all, yeah where also it's to be noted that the symbols used are not the symbols used sorry are not neither ought to be simply hieroglyphics, emblems, or impressives, but a mixed character, partaking somewhat of all and peculiarly apted to these more magnificent inventions, wherein garments and ensigns deliver the nature of the person and the word the present office. Neither was it becoming or could it stand with the dignity of these shoes after the most miserable and desperate shift of the puppets, to require a trunchman, or with the ignorant painter, one to write, this is a dog, or this is a hare, but so to be presented upon the view they might, without cloud or obscurity, declare themselves to be to the sharp and learned. And for the multitude, no doubt, their ground judgments did gaze, said it was fine and were satisfied. And now we have the speeches of gratulation. Genius first. Wait, hang on. Should we talk about this? We'll talk about it after we've listened to the speeches, but you're right. It is something we do need to talk about. Yes, so, but let's hear the speeches. Oh, uh, you have muted yourself. <laughs> See, I, I am a genius. Mm. Time, fate, and fortune have at length conspired to give our age the day so much desired. But all the minutes, hours, weeks, months, and years that hang in file upon these silver hairs could not produce beneath the Briton stroke, the Roman, Saxon, Dane, and Norman yoke. This point of time hath done. Now, London, rear thy forehead high, and on it strive to wear thy choicest gems. Teach thy steep towers to rise higher with people set with sparkling eyes thy spacious windows. And in every street, let, fro let thronging joy, love, and amazement meet. Cleave all the air with shouts, and let the cry strike through as long as universally as thunder. For now thou art blessed to see that sight for which thou didst begin to be. When Brutus' plow first gave thee infant bounds, and I thy genius walked auspicious rounds in every furrow, then did I forelook and saw this day marked white in Clotho's book. The several circles both of change and sway within this isle there also figured lay, of which the greatest perfectest and was this whose present happiness we taste why keep you silence daughters what dull peace is this inhabits you shall office cease upon the aspect of him to whom you owe more than you are or can be shall time know that article wherein your flame stood still and not aspired ha, now heaven avert an ill of that black look air pause air pause possess your breasts I wish you more of plagues. Zeal, when it rests, leaves to be zeal. Up, thou tame river, wake, and from thy liquid limbs this slumber shake. 
thou drown'st thyself in inefficious sleep, and these thy sluggish waters seem to creep rather than flow up, rise, and swell with pride above thy banks. Now is not every tide. To what vain end should I contend to show my weaker powers when seas of pomp o'erflow the city's face and cover all the shore with sands more rich than Tagus' wealthy ore? When in the flood of joy that comes with him, he drowns the world, yet makes it live and swim and spring with gladness. Not my fishes here, though they be dumb, but do express the cheer of these bright streams. No less may these and I boast our delights, albeit we silent lie. Indeed, true gladness doth not always speak. Joy bred and born but in the tongue is weak. Yet lest the fervour of so pure a flame as this my city bears might lose the name without the apt eventing of her heat. No greatest James, and no less good than great, in the behalf of all my virtuous sons, whereof my eldest there thy pomp foreruns, a man without my flattering or his pride, as worthy as he's blessed to be thy guide. In his grave name, and all his brethren's right, who thirst to drink the nectar of thy sight. The council, commoners, and multitude, glad that this day so long denied is viewed, I tender thee the heartiest welcome yet that ever king had to his empire's seat. Never came man more longed for, more desired, and being come, more reverenced, loved, admired. Hear and record it. In a prince it is no little virtue to know who are his. With like devotions do I stoop to embrace this springing glory of thy godlike race, his country's wonder, hope, love, joy, and pride. How well he doth become the royal side of this erected and broad-spreading tree, under whose shade may Britain ever be. And from this branch, may thousand branches more shoot o'er the main and knit with every shore in bonds of marriage, kindred, and increase and style this land the navel of their peace. This is your servant's wish, your city's vow, which still shall propagate itself with you. And free from spurs of hope that slow minds move, he seeks no hire that owes his life to love. And here she comes that is no less a part in this day's greatness than in my glad heart. Glory of queens and glory of your name, whose graces do as far outspeak your fame as fame does silence, when her trumpet rings you daughter, sister, wife of several kings, besides alliance and the style of mother, in which one title you drown all your other. Instance be that fair shoot is gone before, your eldest joy and top of all your store, with those whose sight to us is yet denied, but not our zeal to them, or aught beside this city can to you, for whose estate she hopes you will be still good advocate to her best lord. So whilst you mortal are, no taste of sour mortality once dare approach your house, nor fortune greet your face, but coming on and with a forward face. And so closes the information on this first pageant. Um, and it's interesting, uh, in Deckers, they then move on to the pageants. Deckers does uh, in the approach uh, through the city. Um, and, you know, there's part of me wondering here, you know, uh, we had constant references to Decker saying the king didn't stay, he didn't listen. I'm wondering after, you know, maybe he thought all the speeches were going to be as long as this one. Um, because I, I, I did actually really quite like this. Uh, I thought I thought this is actually Johnson's done quite a nice job. But there is a lot of it. Um, it it's quite a chunky chunky one um but actually I, I i rather enjoyed that um now we've got we've got the full uh account now um and as ever with these accounts every so often you just get a little bit of shade uh just a bit of shade thrown by by the author and of which we need to as as liza said we should really unpack some of that because there's some really interesting questions um his sort of uh magritte moment of this is not <laughs> Uh, this is a dog, or this is a hare. This this is not a pageant. Um, uh, what would it's this this well this, this this stuff that is going on here? Um, uh, I I think he's arguing against. I mean, uh, 
I guess what he's done is he doesn't label the daughters and their concepts and the warriors. He doesn't label the personages with their names. He just puts mottos over them and some of them are in Latin. Mm. It's it, like and, saying, I, I, I trust my audience. They don't need to be told these things. Is that what he's saying? <laughs> yeah, saying, you know, um, it's not, it wouldn't be dignified to just say, you know, this is the Thames or mm. this, this, you know, this daughter with the ash colored mantle represents devotion. Or, I, um, I, 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 I think I respectfully disagree with Ben Johnson here. <laughs> throw the audience a crumb <laughs> well see they declare he says they declare themselves to the sharp and learned and for the multitude no doubt but they rounded judgments to gaze and said it was fine which at that this time rather than meaning simply okay it means like very pretty or refined um mm. and and we're satisfied yeah, the, you know, the, the, if which, it looks it, nice, they'll like it, right? Yeah, which which, which is a not not entirely untrue, but is also deeply patronising at the same time. Uh, so it's just yeah, and then we have this reference to uh, shift of puppets. Um, <laughs> and, do do we know what he's talking about here? Oh, are there are, are some of these are some of the higher figures up? just uh, not actual real people or what or maybe it's maybe it was a previous pageant i mean presumably james arrived at the tower before this and there must have been some kind of show to greet him coming to the tower this I... seems like the morning after he arrived at the tower we do, uh, we do... i mean there was there was the um st george and st andrew piece which was intended to be stated at bishop's gate when he first arrives in the city which decker describes um that never never performed um, I mean, it just, it just strikes me as being a bit, the stuff about, you know, stupid people can just enjoy themselves. You know, we've seen that before with, with Hayward, that's pretty standard and it's mm. classic Johnson as well. Uh, but the other bit, I, I don't know, I mean, given this is a man who wrote Bartholomew Fair, it seems a bit peculiar, doesn't it? Um, yeah, uh, I mean, it, it's, it, it, uh, we have also had sometimes references in, in, in royal entries uh, before of, of sort of side pieces that are, you know, where, where choirs will sing and, and things. So maybe there are more sort of smaller, they're not official things, but they're sort of the king will pass them. So maybe there's other stuff going on that these aren't recording. Um, and maybe that's a clue to that. We just went, yeah, and there was some, there's some other stuff happens, but nothing to do with me. Um, yeah. I'm I mean, I'm thinking they did. They did occasionally use sort of scene setting signs of that kind on stage, generally, and maybe he didn't like that as a practice. I don't know. I'm guessing here. Mm. It depends what he means by puppet. He might not literally mean puppets in that sense. He might be meaning just um, uh, elements of uh, the the mute uh, performers within this. Um, that the, the, there's um, some you know maybe some of them are miming too much uh you know pa you know d d maybe they're playing with their squirrel in a way that he doesn't approve of um and you know uh, that's that, that's a problem um i i i've i've heard people talk talk about actors as their, as meat puppets so you know that's uh, maybe that and i i do think J johnson thinks of, thinks of actors that way sometimes as well the way he he really tries to direct from behind the scenes uh it's it's not unusual Again, I'm spitballing here. Um, uh, shoot me down, by all means. Um, uh, other thoughts before we move on to the next uh, pageant that Johnson did. Um, so we're shifting off. Um, uh, oh, uh, are you uh, Tracy? Are you? Or oh, your your hand was just no. Okay. Um, yeah, we're shooting off to Temple Bar. So we've uh, we, we've we've uh, oh, go to the. If you want to segue and go off and watch a lot of Decker, go watch those videos come back. Um, uh, the, 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 it's a very much a Decker sandwich, um, a, 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 a quadruple Decker sandwich or something. I don't know how many, I can't remember how many he did in the end. Anyway, it's a double Decker sandwich in the sense that there's, there's, there, there are two videos on that. I'm, I'm just going to stop. Right, okay. Uh, the other at Temple Bar. Uh, Tom, um, if you can take up the cudgels um, and, uh, and describe what's going on there carried the front piece of the temple the walls of which and gates were brass their pillars silver their capitals and bases gold in the highest points of all was erected a janus head and over it written 
that. <laughs> Which uh, title of Quadrifonte? Uh, uh, Jano uh, Quadrifonte Sacrum. Thank you. Which title of Quadrifonte is said to be given him as he respecteth all climates and fills all parts of the world with his majesty. Which Marshall would seem to allude oh, on. No, to skip, skip the bit in bold, go on to, but we'd rather follow. Right. I... But we'd rather follow, and, and that more particularly the opinion of the ancients who have entitled him Quadrifons, Frons, in regard of the year which under his sway is divided into four seasons, spring, summer, autumn, and winter, and ascribe unto him the beginnings and ends of things. Another lengthy footnote that he gives us, um, uh, and we go on to, about his foreheads, he hath a wreath of gold, in which was a graven this verse, tot voltus mihi nec santis putafi, signifying that though he had four faces, yet he thought them not enough to behold the greatness and glory of that day. Beneath under the head was written et modo sacrifico uh, clusius or vocor. For being open, he was styled patulcus, uh, uh, but then upon the coming of his majesty, being, in, uh, being to be shut, he was to be called uh, clusius. Upon the foremost front of the building was placed the entire arms of the kingdom with the garter, crown, and supporters cut forth as fair and great as the life with an hexastic written underneath all expressing the dignity and power of him that should close that temple. Another lengthy Latin tag put in place there. Um, and uh, Liza, could you take on after that in the great freeze, please? In a great frieze below that ran quite along the breadth of the building were written these two verses out of Horace. Eurandasque suum per nomen ponimus aras nil oriturum alias nil ortum tale fatentes. The first and principal person in the temple was Irene, or she was placed, uh, placed aloft in a cant, her attire white, seamed with stars, her hair loose and large, a wreath of olive on her head, on her shoulder a silver dove. In her left hand, she held forth an olive branch with an handful of ripe ears. In the other, a crown of laurel as notes of victory and plenty. By her stood Plutus or wealth, a little boy bareheaded, his locks curled and spangled with gold of a fresh aspect, his body almost naked, saving some rich robe cast over him. In his arms, a heap of gold ingots to express riches, whereof he is the god. Beneath her, beneath his feet, lay Enialius, or Mars, groveling, his armor scattered upon him in several pieces, and sundry sorts of weapons broken about him. Her word to all was, una triumphis inumeris potior signifying that peace alone was better and more to be coveted than innumerable triumphs. And uh, Desna, take over from there. Besides, upon the right hand of her, but with some little descent, in a hemicycle was seated a psychia, or quiet, the first handmaid of peace, a woman of a grave and venerable aspect, attired in black, upon her head an artificial nest out of which appeared stork's heads to manifest a sweet repose. Her feet were placed upon a cube to show stability and in her lap she held a perpendicular or level as the ensign of evenness and rest. On the top of it sat a halcyon or king's fisher. She had lying at her feet taraki or tumult in a garment of diverse but dark colours, her hair wild and disordered, a foul and troubled face. About her lay staves, swords, ropes, chains, hammers and stones, and such like, to express turmoil. The word was, Peragit Tranquia Protestus. To show the benefit of a calm and facile power, being able to effect in a state that which no violence can. On the other side, the second handmaid was Eleutheria, or Liberty, her dressing white and somewhat antique 
but loose and free, her hair flowing down her back and shoulders. In her right hand, she bear a club on her left, a hat, the characters of freedom and power. At her feet, a cat was placed, the creature most affecting and expressing liberty. She trod on dulosis or servitude, a woman in old and worn garments, lean and meagre, bearing fetters on her feet and hands about her neck, a yoke to insinuate bondage, and the word nec unquam gratio, and intimated that liberty could never appear more graceful and lovely than now under so good a prince. And Eric, take up the third handmaid, please. The third handmaid was Sot Sotiria, or safety, a damsel in carnation, the color signifying cheer and life. She sat high upon her head. Oh, wait, she sat high. Upon her head, she wore an antic helm, and in her right hand, a spear for defense. In her left, a cup for medicine. At her feet was a pedestal, upon which a serpent uh, rolled up did lie. Beneath was Pira, or danger, which uh, a woman despoiled and almost naked. A little garment she hath left her of several colors to note her various disposition. Besides her lies a torch out and the sword broken. The instruments of her fury with a net and wolfskin, the ensigns of her malice, rent in pieces. The word terga deder metus, and imp implying that now all fears are have turned their backs and our safety might become security, danger being so wholly depressed and unfurnished of all means to hurt. And uh, Tom, could you take up the fourth attendant, please? Oh, you've just muted yourself, Tom. The fourth attendant is Eudomia, or Felicity varied on the second hand and apparelled richly in an, an embroid, embroidered robe and mantle. A fair golden tress, in her right hand a caddis, the note of a peaceful wisdom, in her left cornucopia, filled only with flowers as a sign of flourishing blessedness and crowned with a garland of the same. At her feet, Dysparaga, or unhappiness, a woman bareheaded, her neck, arms, breast, and feet naked, her look hollow and pale. She holds a cornucopia turned up downward, with all the flowers fallen out and scattered upon her. Her sits and scattered upon her sits a raven as an augury of ill fortune and the soul of redundant out out of vigil out of virgil to show that now those golden times were returned again wherein peace was was with so with us so advanced rest received liberty restored faith safety assured and blessedness appearing in every of these virtues a particular triumph over her opposite evil this is the dumb argument of the frame and illustrated with the verse of virgil written in the under freeze and nulla sella spello uh, passum te prosimus uh, omnes and we'll pause there before we get to the text of this one um so yeah we've got some 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 really interesting images again um that, that are quite nice um i think we all want the artificial nest um uh, 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 balanced on someone's head out of which appears dork's heads i i think that's uh, that's definitely one for uh, the the fashionistas out there um we obviously have a, a cat a creature most affecting and expressing liberty that that uh, i think uh, many people in the room would agree with that one um uh and um yeah, we've we've uh, we've got uh, again a fair amount of nudity uh, again, sort of being you know the woman despoiled and almost naked. Um, there's 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 a fair amount of that kind of stuff going on here. Um, and and yeah, so we have these 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 sort of 
alternating figures uh, uh, of, 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 of sort of above and below uh, throughout this. Um, uh, we've got peace uh, o- standing over and pushing down tumult, um, uh, a- 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 etc. Um, and um, yeah, uh, the the the, corn- the image of the cornucopia turned downwards so that everything's fallen out of it. So it's like you had the horn of plenty, and uh, and and oh, you fell over, and it's all <laughs> it's all over the floor. Uh, easily done, I suppose. Um, uh, thoughts on these? Uh, who wants to leap in? Um, uh, Tom. Well, it's a, it, he's an excellent writer, and he's just gone for the esoteric. He doesn't care about the audience. Um, and he's really enjoying himself, you can tell. Um, he's he's weaving a very rich tapestry that he wants to weave mm. despite everybody else. But he can do it. Yeah, we've, we've got a lot of visual detail here. I mean, it, 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 this is a slightly easier one to recreate with the data that we have at hand because it's, it is quite detailed. Um, you know, the, do, do we know who... Uh, I don't have anything to hand to give me this uh, the data. You know, we, we often have with the Lord Mayor shows, you know, the, the, the artificers who are doing the, uh, the, the work and making things uh, look. Uh, you know, the, the, there's a lot of people involved in this, uh, this, 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 this work. Um, and I'm sort of wondering... Who's, who's making this and who's making this happen? Well, Harrison, Harrison does a lot of work on the actual arches, mm. designing and, you know, I guess supervising the building of them. I completely forgot to say earlier on that Londinium, of course, the genius of London is performed by Edward Erlene, mm. um, which is kind of quite a big thing, um, obviously. Um, yeah, uh, this bit I think is where he gets a little bit like in, in, in the interest of making James's arrival seems an amazing thing bringing about wonderful wonderful things he of course runs the risk of making Elizabeth rain sound completely pants um, <laughs> and he doesn't quite pull it off mm. I don't think Oh yes, yes, that yes, I see, I see exactly what you mean now. Yes. Uh... <laughs> and shortly, he goes on to predict that James's court is going to be free of flattery and factionalism, which I think is absolutely hilarious. Mm, yeah, well, um, yeah, the the ironies of history uh, often are unkind to these texts. <laughs> uh, I, I think we particularly had that with um, uh, some of the the, the royal uh, material for uh, uh, Henry the Sixth and and his children. Um, when when you're sort of going, oh, it's going to go well for you, and your 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 family going to reign for it's going, No, <laughs> it's not going to work work out that way. We're terribly terribly sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, yes, you're right. The, the imagery is 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 in danger of uh, of not doing too well there. Um, we, we're about to get some performance text as well, and a little more, more from uh, Johnson on this pageant, Liza. Um, I just wanted to flag up um, the figure of Liberty in white with a cat at her feet because that is the creature that most desires liberty and like how little things have changed from then to now. Um, I wonder if the figures at the, I wonder if the figures at the personage's feet might have been plaster sculptures or something, you know, rather than people. Um, it, uh, certainly, I don't think you could get a real cat to stay still for that long so that so i'm wondering if some of the people that the others are treading on uh might might be uh artificial people rather than real people oh i don't know you do that hold, hold that position for you know for only for as long as james is passing and the rest of it who cares um yeah no it's a good thought um because you know how literally are they treading on them? Um, uh, you know, if, if it's part of the, uh, the, the the logic of the platform they're standing on, um, then 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 that might make that easier. Yeah. Uh, any more? Okay, let's let's hear some. Uh, we've got a little bit more from Johnson. Uh, I'll ask Desna to read that. Uh, the approach in. Um, Eric, could you be Fleming? Uh, and Liza, if you could reprise your genius, please, uh, of, of, of the city um, uh, for continuity. And, um, and then we, uh, we will pause again because we have one more uh, pageant after that. But uh, that, will, uh, that will do us uh, for, for this one. So uh, 
while we are still uh, at Temple Bar, um, Desna, can you um, describe away? The speaking part was performed as within the temple where there was erected an altar to which at the approach of the king appears the flamen, Marshalis, and to him, genius Urbis. The genius we attired before, for the flamen we appoint this habitat. A long crimson robe to witness his nobility, his tippet and sleeves white, as reflecting on purity in his religion. A rich mantle of gold with a train to express the dignity of his function. Upon his head, a hat of delicate wool whose top ended in a cone and was thence called flamen. This apex was covered with a fine net of yarn which they named Apiculum and was sustained with a bowed twig of pomegranate tree. It was also in the hot time of summer to be bound with ribbons and thrown behind them, as scale of the teaching. In his hand he bore a golden censer with perfume, and sensing about the altar, having first kindled his fire on the top, is interrupted by the genius. Stay, what art thou that in this strange attire darest kindle stranger and unhallowed fire upon this altar? Uh, rather, what art thou that darest so rudely interrupt my vow? My habit speaks my name. A flamen? Yes, and Marshall is called. I so did guess by my short view, but whence didst thou ascend, hither, or how, or to what mystic end? The noise and present tumult of this day roused me from sleep, and silence where I lay obscured from light, which when I waked to see, I wondering thought what this great pomp might be, when, looking in my calendar, I found the Ides of March were entered, and I, I bound with these to celebrate the genial feast of Anna Stilled Perenna, Mars's guest, who in this month of his is yearly called to a banquet at his alt altars, and installed a goddess with him since she fills the year and knits the oblique scarf that girds the sphere, whilst four-faced Janus turns his urnal look upon their meeting hours, as if he took high pride and pleasure. Sure, thou still dost dream, and both thy tongue and thought rides on the stream of fantasy. Behold here, he nor she have any altar, fane, or deity. Stoop, read but this inscription, and then view to whom the place is consecrate. Tis true that this is Janus' temple, and that now he turns upon the year his freshest brow, that this is Mars, his month, and these the Ides, wherein his Anne was honored. Both the tides, titles, and place we know, but these dead rites are long since buried, and new power excites more high and hearty flames. Lo, there is he who brings with him a greater Anne than she whose strong and potent virtues have defaced stern Mars his statues, and upon them placed his and the world's blessed blessings. This hath brought sweet peace to see, sit in that bright state she ought, unbloody or untroubled, hath forced hence all tumults, fears, or other dark portents that might invade weak minds, hath made man see once more the face of welcome liberty, and doth in all his present acts restore that first pure world made of the better ore. Now innocence shall cease to be the spoil of ravenous greatness or to steep the soil of raised peasantry with tears and blood. No more shall rich men for their little good suspected to be made guilty or vile spies enjoy the lust of their so murdering eyes. Men shall put off their iron minds and hearts. The time forget his old malicious arts with this new minute, and no print remain of what was thought the former age's stain. Back, flamen, with thy superstitious fumes, and sense not here. Thy ignorance presumes too much in acting any ethnic rite in this translated temple. Here no white to sacrifice save my devotion comes that brings instead of those thy masculine gums, my city's heart, which shall forever burn upon this altar, and no time shall turn the same to ashes. Here I fix it fast, flame bright, 
flame high and may it ever last, whilst I before the figure of thy peace still tend the fire and give it quick increase with prayers, wishes, vows, whereof be these the least and weakest, that no age may lease the memory of this so rich a day, but rather that it henceforth yearly may begin our spring, and with our spring the prime, and first a compt of years, of months, of time, and may these Ides as fortunate appear to thee as they to Caesar fatal were. Be all thy thoughts born perfect, and thy hopes in their events still crowned beyond their scopes. Let not wide heaven that secret blessing know to give which she on thee will not bestow. Blind fortune be thy slave, and may her store, the less thou seek'st it, follow thee the more. <laughs> Much more I would, but see these brazen gates make haste to close as urged by thy fates. Here ends my city's office, here it breaks. Yet with my tongue and this pure heart she speaks, a uh, short farewell, and lower than thy feet, with fervent thanks thy royal pains doth greet. Pardon if my abruptness breed disease. Uh, he merits not to offend that hastes to please. And uh, over the altar, uh, there's a series of Latin inscriptions and also upon the gate itself when shut. Uh, so uh, again, there's a whole host of additional uh, material and data, which is primarily visual, which we won't be looking at here. Um, OK, we've 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 got this little uh, this little uh, performance. Um, uh, it's 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 um it's it, what what's he doing um i'm 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 uh what 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 is, what is johnson doing here what is what is he telling the king here uh or okay is... uh, a flamen is a priest right uh, of a, a roman uh priest i forget of which i, I think of jupiter but i i could be wrong on that <sighs> and um but, but this flamen is a flamen of Mars, I think. Mm. He's called Martialis, so. Um, and he was like, well, I heard someone sacred was coming, so I lit this thing on fire for them. That was what a flamen did. They they lit the sacred fire on the altar. And this, this one is also, uh, he's got some sort of Catholic imagery with the censer that he's swinging around. Well, that, I don't that... know whether Anglicans use censers at this time. Yeah, that's or, what, I, what I was wondering right? whether this was a this was a tacit thing of saying, um, you know, uh, that, that that James isn't going to go in a new direction um, uh, uh, from the previous monarch, which which is something in this sort sort of his first year. There's a bit of a vacillation back and forth, and um, uh, which which uh, disappointment, shall we say, may lead to events uh, in years to come. Um, uh, but uh, I could be misreading that. I, I, I noticed that, but then I also noticed the fact that he's citing Scalinger, who is one of the kind of main northern protestant theologians so it's 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 a little mixed i mean by now johnson has probably converted to Catholicism, hasn't he so mm. um yeah i'm not really sure about this bit um it, he's kind of seems to be saying you know we're not having any of this pagan nonsense around here anymore mm. Yeah. But again, well, it gets caught up in this kind of you know criticizing what's just gone stuff is not necessarily very politic. Mm. Yeah, well, the, the flamen is a flamen of Mars, and he's saying that we're now going to the age of peace, um, and we don't need all those uh, martial things from before. Um, and he's also... Good. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a good point, Liza, because, of course, I'm just thinking what James's favourite sort of nickname was Rex Pacificus, wasn't he? So mm. maybe, the, maybe Johnson already popped from James's time in Scotland that that's kind of his general approach. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, because you know he's been on the throne effectively for the, the better part of a year now. Um, obviously, some delayed and and, and and things, and and getting getting an idea of what James is into is 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 already perhaps as media, vaguely established now. Because of course, all, it's, it's littered with Britons all over the place. This text, um, uh, which again is a, a project that James is going to be uh, pushing. Um, but it's also that question of how quickly is James pushing this um, and, and, and um, how publicly, uh, of which I don't know. Um, so it's, it's, it's quite interesting on that, that, that level of, uh, you know, the, the, the political uh, aim for James. Um, 
Uh, and, uh, you know, of course, we've done Lord Mayor shows going th towards the end of James's reign. And <laughs> it's fair to say that it, it want, wanting peace doesn't doesn't quite doesn't quite get what he wants. Um, uh, so <laughs> it's, yeah, interesting uh, possibilities about what this text is doing. Um, uh, any more or any more for this one before we move on to our final pageant? No. OK, so we have another short one. Uh, this is very short. It's at the Strand, um, uh, and uh, it's it's mostly a speech uh, by a lecturer um, of of myth mythological fame. I'll ask Desna to read a lecturer when we come to it. Uh, and Tom, if you could read uh, the first paragraph, and then I'll do the mini bit because there's there's a lot of redundant text there. So I'll I'll step in, Tom, um, in a moment. So if we can go from the invention was a rainbow. Uh, Tom, at the Strand. The invention was a rainbow, the moon, sun, and those seven stars, which antiquity hath styled the Pallades, or Virgil Virgilate, advanced between two magnificent pyramids of 70 foot in height, on which were drawn His Majesty's several pedigrees, English and Scott, to which body being framed before, we were to apt our soul. And finding that one of these seven lights, Electra, is is rarely or not at all or not at all to be seen. As Oswald affirmeth massive footnote, um, we ventured to follow this authority and made her the speaker, presenting her hanging in the air in figure of a comet, and Electra speaks thusly. The long laments I spent for ruin Troy are dried, and now mine eyes run tears of joy. No more shall men suppose Electra dead, though from the consort of her sisters fled unto the Arctic circle, here to grace and gild this day with her serenest face. And see, my daughter Iris hastes, hastes to throw her roseate wings and compass of a bow, about our state, a sign of my approach, attracting to her seat from Mithra's coach, a thousand different and particular hues, which she throughout her body doth diffuse. The sun, as loath to part from this half sphere, stands still, and Phoebe labours to appear, in all as bright, if not as rich as he. And for a note of more serenity, my six fair sisters hither shift their lights to do this hour the utmost of her rights. Where lest the captious or profane might doubt how, how these clear heavenly bodies, uh, oh, bless you. oh, how these clear heavenly bodies come about, all to be seen at once, yet neither's light eclipsed or shadowed by the other's sight. Let ignorance know, great king, this day is thine, and doth admit no night, but all do shine, as well nocturnal as diurnal fires, to add unto the flame of our desires. Which are, now thou hast closed up Janus' gates, and given so general peace to all estates, that no offensive mist or cloudy stain may mix with splendour of thy golden rain. But as thou hast freed thy chamber from the noise of war and tum tumult, Thou will power those joys upon this place, which claims to be the seat of all the kingly race, the cabinet. To all thy councils and the judging chair to this thy special kingdom, who so fair and wholesome laws in every court shall strive by equity and their first innocence to thrive. The base and guilty bribes of guiltier men shall be thrown back and justice look, as when she loved the earth and feared not to be sold, for that which worketh all things to it, gold. The dam of other evils, avarice, shall here lock down her jaws, and that rude vice of ignorance and pitted greatness, pride, decline with shame. Ambition now shall hide her face in dust, as dedicate to sleep, that in great portals want her watch to keep. All ills shall fly the light, thy court be free, no less from envy than from flattery. All tumult, faction, and harsh discord cease that might perturb the music of thy peace. The querulous nature shall no longer find room for his thoughts, one pure consent, 
one pure consent of mind shall flow in every breast, and not the air, sun, moon, or stars shine more serenely fair. This from that loud blessed oracle I sing, who here and first pronounce thee Britain's king. Long mayst thou live and see me thus appear as ominous a comet from my sphere unto thy reign, as that did us vacate, so lasting glory to Augustus State. And thus we run out of text. Um, so yes, uh, not the, not the lecturer of uh, of of uh, uh, character within uh, the Greek tragedy. Uh, this is uh, 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 one of the seven daughters of uh, of Atlas, um, and uh, and has a very different arc. Um, hence the fact that we're in a, uh, a, a, a it, it can be a star. Uh, and uh, and uh, yes, this invention is doing interesting things. That we have a rainbow between two magnificent pyramids. The seventy foot in height um you know they're, they're, there's this you know it's a king so they they, they build big um and yeah electra does to this and this is this is a much more straightforward bit of um arse licking really isn't it um it's uh uh, you know, it 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 feels more assured. It, it feels I feel slightly less am, am, ambiguous about the what what this this bit is doing than the the previous one where I'm sort of going, oh this this could be read in different ways. Um, but then maybe I've missed something. Thoughts on this one? Um, thoughts on Electra. I'm I'm wondering whereabouts on the strand it was actually. Mm. It's because it's outside the city, I've also just ignored this bit. <laughs> You don't have any biases at all, do you? No, not completely <laughs> objective. Mm. Um, so I don't really know. I mean, I, I'm guessing it's kind of nearer to Westminster than not, but to Westminster Palace, rather. Obviously, it's mm. in Westminster. Um, mm, doesn't give you any clues, does it? No, I mean it's a question, I suppose, of space uh, as well. Maybe the, the, because you're building a pyramid. I mean, it depends on how pyramidical the pyramids are. We've had this question about what they mean by the word pyramid, as to whether it's more a, 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 a you know an actual regular pyramid or whether it's more of a, a an obelisk style thing uh, or just a triangular style thing. But th this does feel like it's an actual pyramid, <laughs> in which case the base is going to be you know you, you're going to need a. a um, 140 foot um, uh, to, to to play with if it's uh, you know or thereabouts. So um, uh, yeah, there's some sort of interesting questions uh, uh, about you know how 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 big or tall or, or, or regular that is. Um, and also, well, where... maybe maybe the pyramids are not. Maybe it, maybe the 70 foot describes the rainbow rather than the pyramids. Yeah, it's it's yeah. There's again all sorts of questions about you know size, but it could still be quite a massive object. And maybe they've chosen this spot for it because there might be a bit more room because we're we're slightly outside of the uh, the, the the usual limits. Um, um, and we had a cat earlier. We have a cat now, so it's nice to have one in uh, one in view. Uh, but for those who no are not sure what they were talking about when they mentioned a cat earlier, that there, there, there was a demonstration model. Um, yeah, I mean, the precise locations for this is uh, a question. Are, are there regular spots? Because obviously, we we have covered some other royal entries before, and and things. So I, so I don't know if there might be other clues elsewhere that gives that um uh that data um and yeah that's a question for street maps as well um to see what might function there um but yeah a very straightforward closer uh, it feels like he's playing that with a fairly straight bat um so yeah we've put i think we've put together the pieces um on, on this one uh other thoughts about it overall as well as just this uh anything else anyone wants to 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 throw in um uh one it, it's one of these things I, it's it's similar to other um uh pageants that we've looked at in the sense that often you start reading the text and you have absolutely no idea what is going on and then it gets and then there's a reiteration or there's something that's slightly out of out of order and then you start oh i see this is how it functions so the three pageants are actually relatively straightforward they're just very detailed because there's more going on here visually than we we have for your standard Lord Mayor show. Uh, some of them are very visual, uh, it, uh, are, are as detailed. Um, but you know, obviously, there are more pageants going on here, and that you know, we've got all these arches and things and and and, and stuff that that Lord Mayor shows generally don't do um, in the same way. Similar but different. 
Um, other thoughts? He pauses for reply. It might have been adjacent to Somerset House because that was royal, used as a royal palace occasionally. Mm. That's possible. Mm. But yeah, other than that, I don't know. Um, I mean, Johnson really beefs up the Romanness mm. of the whole triumphal kind of concept. Although we then spend quite a lot of time saying, yes, but it's not a Roman because it's neither Republic nor Pagan. Mm. Yes, the, 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 the pedantry just w won't, won't keep in, will it? It just, it just can't be pushed down. It just can't. Um, <laughs> between Mon him, Monday and Hayward, I mean, we really have got a set of people here. <laughs> Um, what was I going to say? Uh, any other thoughts while I think of uh, closing principles? Um, we have got a set, an account of the day, which we will uh, hopefully look at uh, soon. Um, so we got a little bit more data about how the actual day panned out. And we do have these questions, uh, uh, Tracy alluded earlier, as to sort of pageants planned but not actually uh, realised and actually what elements of this actually happened as opposed to this is what they wrote and prepared and hell i'm printing it so i'm going to pull it out there in the world there's always a there's always a bit of a question as to how much of this is real and how much is this is the intent um and of course you know uh, what was the weather like on the day do you know uh tracy uh off the top of your head you know how good a day was it it was it was you know potentially quite cold um and you know a long day for everyone and well decker doesn't say anything about it being particularly unpleasant and i think he would he would have done um yeah. I, I mean I, I haven't read doug Dale for a while so he might give us some more of that kind of context actually mm. um, so um any final thoughts from the room um anyone wants to throw in um i think we've uh, we, we've possibly got the measure of johnson um as it were uh so if nobody else has anything else i will close the session now uh so uh it's uh, so there will be a little bit more on this uh we still have some other uh, uh pageantry to look at but we are running out of pageantry it has to be said to look at for the first time um but uh, we are um um we are we are sort of getting there uh, but then the closer we the the more we do the the closer we get to producing them in a in a fuller way further on and that's always our aim is to uh, to keep coming back to them um so we'll be hopefully doing some more second looks as well uh, to go over some some of the ground that we've looked at previously all that remains however is thank all the wonderful readers for all their wonderful reading thank you very much everyone and goodbye at her feet a cat was placed <laughs>